Hello everyone, Santer here, and today I want to talk about some design stuff that Pokemon as a series, not any individual game, uh, but as a series, as a general set of design collectives, does really well. Uh, and in particular, um, I've been impressed by reflecting on the benefits and, and the advantages of some of these design elements as I've been working on my own game and trying to solve similar problems. So I specifically want to talk about types, uh, move pools, learn sets, whatever you want to call them specifically, as well as like evolution and the sort of like character progression advancement stuff. So starting off with the types, this is actually does a really good job of solving. So there, there's a challenge when you are, I mean, mini games have different types of damage, right? Different damage types. There's a challenge in making that relevant to the game. Specifically, uh, there's the informational challenge of making it clear that these matter. Uh, and then there's further, like, are you going to try to, like, balance the importance of stats, such as your attack and defense stats, uh, versus type uh, and how much types matter in combat. And Pokemon does a really good job of addressing these things. Um, types matter a lot in Pokemon, but they're also fairly simple like i know the type chart's a big complicated thing and and you get two types and then you have to do a bunch of math in your head but because things are either neutral where it's a one times multiplier for for types uh weak where it's a two times multiplier like you'll take two times damage from it it's super effective against you uh resistant or immune it's actually a very narrow band of possible things with very easy math for what happens when you have multiple types this works out super well, as, along with it's super effective and not very effective dialogue coming up to let you know, hey, this is an advantageous or disadvantageous type matchup. And it does such a beautiful job, such a, a clean, beautiful job of communicating this sort of concept, of making it something where it's possible to process, it's possible to understand. Uh, not to mention, they do a really good job overall, not all the time, but overall a pretty good job of communicating through visual design language what types a Pokemon is. Um, water Pokemon often look like aquatic creatures, fish, things like that. You can tell that something's grass type. Ground tends to have a certain look. Flying tends to have a certain look. And so you have these visual cues in the visual design that give you a hint as to what types a Pokemon probably is. This works really well to make types relevant to the system, uh, intuitable, and relatively easy to track, compared, like, all things considered. Um, there's not a whole lot of variables. It, part of what you can run into as a problem here is if something is weak to a type, but it's not called out, and it's like, you know, it takes 10% more damage from it, then it doesn't, it's not really relevant, right? You you have these different types, but they don't really mean anything. Um, and so having something where it's very clear, it's well communicated, it is trackable, all this stuff, it works beautifully, and it's an amazing solution to that problem. I'm very impressed by it, as I've been having to work through solving those problems in my own, in my own RPG. Don't have nearly as many uh, damage types, but... I, I needed to come up, because I wanted types to be relevant, I had to figure out some sort of way of communicating that, uh, and Pokemon provided a great blueprint. Also, I just want to quickly call out same type attack bonus as a really good idea. Uh, abbreviated as stab for same type attack bonus. Uh, this means that moves you use that are of your type deal 50% more damage. Uh, this is a great way of meaning that if you are, say, uh, a Blastoise, your water Pokemon, water moves are going to be more powerful for you than, on average, than other moves. Uh, so, like, if you have a choice between Surf and Ice Beam, both being equal, like, neutral attacks, Surf is going to be more powerful because you're water type. And that creates diversity in what moves you want to use on Pokemon. Uh, and it, it, that's also a really good system, as I've also thought about some of those sorts of things. Uh, that's It's a really, really nice system, which moves us neatly into learn pools or learn sets or move pools or whatever word we want to use here for the, the concept of like so there's a couple of different things that go on with pokemon first of all you only got four moves at a time 
Uh, this is really good from a limitation standpoint. It means that you're making choices about what moves you're using. Uh, you're being very deliberate in how you're building any individual Pokemon. Four is a nice number from the standpoint of providing you a decent selection of options, but not an overwhelming number. Uh, and that that sort of limitation is really good because otherwise you'd end up with like, I don't know, a Pikachu with Thundershock and Discharge and Thunderbolt and Thunder. And it's like, okay. And on top of like, I don't know, Iron Tail and, and Facade and stuff. Like you just end up with these huge piles of moves, many of which end up being functionally redundant. It allows you to get a sense of progression as you're phasing out things you don't want to welcome in new things. But there's a couple of different ways in which Pokemon can learn moves. There is the level up method where you gain levels or you evolve into a level that, that I count that as part of the, the sort of native approach. Uh, and then there are different types of tutoring. So there are like move tutors themselves, move relearners uh, and TMs, HMs, whatever other sort of machines they may <laughs> introduce in the future that do this uh, items that do this sort of thing. But this is a really good system from a number of different standpoints. Um, one of the things that you're always trying to do when you're making a game, and this is especially true for a game like Pokemon where you have a lot of different pieces, is you're trying to differentiate the various parts. Uh, and, of course, you have things like stats and appearance and, and whatnot, but moves, what skills or abilities or whatever you want to say it, that something can use, that's another differentiating factor. And it can be really easy to have everything kind of end up in one big mono blob. And Pokemon does a really good job of saying, hey, this Pokemon has this set of things that it can learn. You know, your, your Pikachu has this set of moves it can learn. Your Blastoise has this set of moves it can learn. Um, and even some differences between different, different Pokemon. Um, what things your Pikachu can learn and what things, say, your Jolteon can learn. There's going to be a lot of overlap, but there's also some differences uh, that'll show up, as well as, like, stats prioritizing things a bit differently especially with the uh, physical special split in gen 4 um, but the mechanisms of learning things means that you have both a natural progression system of leveling up but you're not beholden to that because you can find other ways the game has other mechanisms for rewarding you through play uh, with additional learning opportunities. And I think that's a really good system of giving you feelings of agency in what you're learning, of feeling like uh, you have different methods. Like, imagine if every single TM move that a Pokemon could learn was just part of their level up set instead of having TMs exist. I think that would be a lot less interesting and that would make the game feel a lot less uh, dynamic and a lot more static in terms of the choices that you're making about how to develop your Pokemon. So this, the way that they've done move pools, I think, does a really good job of differentiating individual Pokemon uh, species from each other, of making you make choices. So even if you're making a Pikachu and somebody else is making a Pikachu, maybe you make different choices. Maybe you're like, I want Thunder for the power and somebody else wants Thunderbolt for the accuracy. Um, maybe you want Discharge because it has a higher uh, paralyze rate than, than Thunderbolt um, with just a little bit of power sacrifice, but with maintaining the accuracy. Uh, things like that, where you, you have legitimate choices that you are making about what move you want in any given slot and there is some diversity among those like not every pokemon can learn every tm uh every hm every move tutorable move that means you're you're making choices it just it does a really good job of differentiating characters and making them feel different and distinct and unique and i think that's really good and it lets like the difference in pacing is also like i, I keep highlighting that but it's just such a a critical thing to me of differentiating like level up moves versus other types of learned moves like it just it does so much work for allowing you to feel like you can progress separate from just levels um, while still making levels for like advancing your character's abilities relevant and important which is something else that happens with evolution so there's of course, different mechanisms for obtaining new Pokemon. And I could go on about other things with, like, other things that I like. I might touch on that briefly at the end here. Um, but evolution being a way of advancing your team and making it feel like your team is growing, being significant moments of progress and advancement, uh, I think is a really good system. It gives you a sense of growth in a very poignant and powerful way that I think just levels by themselves doesn't do. Because, like... Pokemon gives you moves on levels. It levels at slightly different rates for different 
different things, you, you, you always have something kind of like happening, some sort of sense that your team is growing and developing. Um, and one of those big ones is evolution. And most evolutions are level up evolutions. I think that's accurate. Uh, it certainly seems that way. Um, but not all evolutions are that way. Not all evolutions happen at the same level. Sure, you have things where uh, bugs often are evolving at like level 7 and then level 10. Those are some common levels. Uh, starters are often evolving around level 14 to 16 for the first time and around level 32 to 36 for the second time. Those are some common trends, but you have Pokemon evolving at different levels. So you have these moments of change happening at different times. And then you have things like evolution stones. You have the trade evolutions. I'm not... They work within certain conceit. I'm not a big fan of them, but I don't think they're a bad idea. It's just personally I dislike them. Um, but they have these different methods of evolving, which means that you can have development happening at different rates, at different times, at different pacings. Some you're making more active decisions about. Some more just like come along, you take them when they arrive. Um, so like stone evolutions, you know, the Pokemon don't tend to learn new moves after you do a stone evolution. That's making it a deliberate choice, right? And so there's a lot of decisions to be made about how your characters advance and progress uh, that I think just work really, really, really well. And I'm really impressed by those solutions and, and how well they work. Um, just to touch on a couple of other, other things quickly at the end. Um, I like the way that Pokemon moves are things that you yourself can use on your your own Pokemon. Like your your opponents in the game are things that you also can use. I always like games that do that, where there's not a huge disparity between you and the opponent. Uh, that's something that I always appreciate. It makes it makes the game I feel uh, more learnable actually, um, because you can understand what it is the the opponent can do as well as what you can do, because what you can do and what the opponent can do are the same pool of options. I really like that, and I like the, sort of the diversity you get from being able to have a wide array of Pokemon to be able to make your team out of. But even if you don't have like those those last things, in particular the wide array of Pokemon, you can still use some of these principles that Pokemon has of like learnable, memorable type matchups uh, that make it clear, make types relevant, make it feasible for them to be relevant. Um, having Learn pools that differentiate and make characters distinct, um, but also don't make you simply beholden to levels. Um, and having senses of progression that occur at specific thresholds and in different ways. Um, these, I've been impressed by all of them as I've reflected on them, as I've been trying to solve similar problems in my own game. So uh, thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, everyone, take care. Goodbye.